The Empress questions by Count Langdell what happened. He told everything the result of his investigation and found out that Rashta paid Viscount Roteshu to spread rumors and fake information about Duchess Tuania. She asked if he told all his report to the Emperor. Viscount Langdell told the Empress that he already explained it to the Wumperor. He didn't listen to him. The Empress asked if he had the report of his investigation, and he answered that the report is in his cabinet. The Empress calls Sir Artina to find an investigation report in Viscount Langdell's mansion. The Viscount cry his eyes out after learning that Duchess Tuania asked the Empress to save him. The Empress offers to change his punishment into exile. The Empress visits Sovieshu's office and discusses a conversation about Viscount Langdell's punishment. Sovieshu become angry and asks her not to interfere and insist her to leave. The Empress then said that she will handle the investigation results herself. Sovieshu stopped the Empress exiting the room and ask what she's talking about. The Empress answered that Viscount Langdell investigation's results reveals Miss Rashta false rumors about Duchess Tuania, which is a separate incident from his baby. The Empress explained that Miss Rashta must locked up in jail and whipped because of what she did. So Vieshu questions her compassion for Rashta and her actions. The Empress asked if he only have compassion with Rashta. So Vieshu seems to be in internal conflict, but he then answered that he will change the punishment of Viscount Langdell into exile. In the evening, Laura informs the Empress that Rashta is safe, including Duchess Tuania's divorce, Viscount Langdell's exile and the unexpected mention of Viscount Roteshu moving in the city, who is looking for a house and a nanny. While listening to Laura, she discovers a pink bottle of a love potion. She left it in her drawer which was given by Anonymous. Laura encourages the Empress to try it, but she refuses, stating there's no specific use for it. Curious about the love potion she received, Grand Duke Capman came to her mind, as he was a graduate from the Magical Academy and she was hoping he can answer her questions about it. After discussing about trades, she asks Duke Capman if he knows about magic potions. She is uncomfortable as it was sent anonymously, and she doesn't believe it's true. She was intrigued by the gift and asks if it is harmful. Capman confirms that it works to some extent, and that it is a genuine drug distributed on the black market. He also mentions that if someone drinks this potion, they may fall in love with the first person they see, causing physical symptoms of love. The Empress is taken aback and doubts the potion's authenticity. Grand Duke Capman offers to prove the effect of the potion, since he has with an antidote, she was surprised that he immediately opened the cap and takes a sip. Suddenly, the door opens. So Vieshu was the person who opens the door. While he was holding a pile of reports, he noticed that Grand Duke Capman was unable to look at Sovieshu's face. The Empress thought that if he saw the Emperor's face first, he might fall in love with him. The Empress thought that if he saw the Emperor's face first, he might fall in love with him. The Empress asked Sovieshu about the files he was holding and if he was here to deliver them. Sovieshu is thinking if he was kissing the Empress. So he grabbed Grand Duke Capman's shoulder. After facing the Emperor, Capman seemed to be in love with Sovieshu, complimenting his appearance. Sovieshu was surprised by Capman's behavior and left the room. Capman reveals that the potion is more effective than he thought and asks the Empress not to come close to her. He also said that he loves her so much that he is willing to risk misunderstandings from his husband to protect her. He suggests to leave him and he will take the antidote in his room. The Empress experienced a strange sensation upon returning to her room, questioning how it feels when someone go crazy for her. The next day, Capman asked for a private conversation, and he explained that the antidote didn't work on him. The Empress asked if he drinks the wrong antidote, but he object. He then that he is the one that gifted the live potion to the Empress as he is frustrated to her relationship with the Emperor. Grand Duke Capman told her that he began to feel interest to the Empress because of the potion and asked her not to prolong his stay with her, so he left. The Empress met the Grand Duke and is asked if she is friend with the Prince, while she answered yes. She asked if he is jealous and admit it. They were talking when the Emperor intervened. So Viesha asked the Empress which between Grand Duke Capman and Prince Heinle she's attracted to. But she answered, there's a misunderstanding. So Viesha questions why she shouldn't be cautious about the pregnancy of an Emperor's firstborn. He added that his child with Rashta is also the Empress child. But she objected, as everyone are aware of the law that if a baby is not an imperial prince or princess, it is not considered a child of the imperial family. So Viesha criticizes the Empress for being selfish and said she's just wary of his unborn baby. He wonders if the Empress regards him as a husband. 
The emperor is about to finish his sentence when Grand Duke Kapman fist lands on his face. Sovieshu and Grand Duke Kapman were in a heated confrontation, with commotion escalating as knights arrived and surrounded Kapman. The empress ordered the knights to stand down twice, but they didn't listen. The knights under Sovieshu's orders lowered their swords, but did not sheath them. Grand Duke Kapman, with his magic, threatened them with electricity. Sovieshu ordered them to stand down, and the knights lowered their swords again. Sovieshu sneered, implying Kapman had a heart for the empress. Kapman questioned the emperor's shameless behavior of asking the empress to accept his child from an affair, but Sovieshu pointed out that Rashta is an official concubine. Rumors about harems among royalty and upper aristocracy sparked interest in the Hua continent. Sovieshu, aware of this, pointed out Grand Duke Kapman's hypocrisy. He didn't trust Kapman and wouldn't imprison him to save his reputation. However, he had to rethink his deal with Rift. Sovieshu left with his men, leaving Grand Duke Kapman, Sir Artina, and the Empress. She apologized for the potion incident, but Kapman blamed himself for not controlling his emotions. Prince Heinle rushed to his quarters to receive an urgent message from Sir McKenna. He opened a letter which revealed that Warden III, the King of the Western Kingdom, was in failing health. Heinle was asked to return, feeling uneasy and worried. McKenna asked Prince Heinle if he will inform Emperor Sovieshu about his return and about his letter friend. Heinle is in turmoil and asks him about his chances of marrying her. The Empress and Prince Heinle meet in the hallway, and they walk together. Prince Heinle reveals that he need to go back to the Western Kingdom. The Empress already prepare herself about this matter. Prince Heinle asks if they can keep exchanging letters, and the Empress agrees. Although the Empress may not see Queen often anymore, he suggests sending another bird. Empress Navier feels closer to Prince Heinle and Queen, but their first parting was more frustrating and terrible than expected. Prince Heinle left the Empress and informed Emperor Sovieshu of his return to his country. Despite their initial misunderstanding, Sovieshu assured him of a safe return. Prince Heinle sought Duke Elgi, which was already with Rashta. He then approached Duke Elgi and talked with him inside his room. The Empress wakes up the next morning to find Prince Heinle leaving at dawn. They may had a strange start, but had grown to be good friends. However, not just Prince Heinle, but Queen left her, leaving her feeling saddened. The Emperor is worried about the future of his unborn child, accepted by the Empress, but Count Pernu is much worried about Lord Kosher Troby than the Empress herself. Kosher is the elder brother Empress Navier, who is skilled in martial arts and resembles her sister. Sovieshu now became worried about Kosher's hot temper and his response with his concubine, Rashta.